but I was interested in, with the challenging timeline of this film, how that affected some of the sound editing decisions, the foreground events becoming background events later, and also with any war movie, especially an iconic battle like this, the authenticity of the actual sounds made by the actual devices and machines. So how do the, all those factor in? I'm gonna Richard. field this well, one to Richard we, uh, King. Can you step Richard, up to the microphone, sir, please? Just tonight. <laughs> work. Oh, I'm usually pointing it the other way, so yeah, I'm sorry, confused. Okay. Uh, we went to great pains to, um, to capture as much authentic sound as we could, uh, recorded all the spitfires, the bombs, guns, uh, boats, um, uh, but we wanted it to be an emotional experience. So it was all about investing the film in as much power and emotion and you know, visceral feeling as we could. And we used every decibel that we had available to do that. You used a really interesting thing called the, and whoever is appropriate right. to answer this, uh, the shepherd tone, that kind of continuously ascending tone. And I'm really curious how you, number one, achieved that, and number two, um, wedded it so beautifully with the, the visuals as well. Well, it, the shepherd tone is something Chris has been playing with, I think, since the Prestige, his movie. So it's been floating around for a while. What it is is it's an ascending line, a melody line, that when it hits a certain note, it starts over again, and then it's overlapping itself, so it always feels like it's going up. It's just a, an oral trick. <laughs> well, it, because the, the movie was fast-paced, you know, we're running out of time, that ascension, that continuous ascension played right into it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. They did, yes. And this is the guy that mixed the... <laughs> Uh, Greg, would you please comment on how it feels to win the Academy Award on your final film, unless Chris urges you back for one more. <laughs> and then, Alex, could you comment on the rare feat of your, your particular role being honored in this category? This film ended up my career. It didn't end my career, but I decided <laughs> to put a period on it. This was my 207th feature film. Ninth nomination and fourth win for a soundtrack. Uh, my first win was for Empire Strikes Back, uh, back in the 80s. But Chris has always encouraged me uh, to reach further into our art craft of mixing a film, to bring something completely different to the soundtrack that the audience would step up and notice. Thank you. I think we have one. Uh, and uh, the reason I said that the historic uh, nomination from the sound branch was a music editor, this is, they don't get awards. There is no Academy Award for a music editor. There never has been. I think one person was nominated years ago, uh, but I'm now the first one to win. And it's because of the intensity of the work I did and how it wove with Richard's work. And a lot of luck. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's what it is. That's how it happened. 